welcome to my channel. Welcome to today's video. Today's video is going to finally be a concealer roundup. I've been putting this video off for about two months now and companies just keep releasing concealers. So I'd buy another, wait to do this video, buy another, wait to do this video and enough's enough. It's finally time to sit down and talk about all of these, rank them all. So I have 12 concealers plus a bonus eye brightener color corrector that I'm going to talk about, rank them all. I will be inserting in a lot of swatches as well as a lot of just video footage showing the contrast of the concealer on one eye versus nothing on the other. So you can really get a feel for the coverage. And that's what we're gonna be doing today. It's gonna to be a lot of information, a lot of talking. We have a lot to go over. So if you like concealer videos, make sure you give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't yet, but let's just get started. I don't wanna make this video any longer than it needs to be. All right, so I will link any just applicable videos down below in the description box or link them up top. Everything that I'm wearing on my face today will also be listed down in the description box. I'm actually not wearing any of these concealers. I'm wearing my Shop My Stash concealer. So if you like Shop My Stash videos, that's also listed. Check the description box, there's a lot. But let's first start off with the bonus product before I get into the ranking. I really didn't think it was fair to include this in the ranking because it's a little bit of a different product. And that is the Ole Hendrickson Banana Bright Vitamin CC Stick. This was kind of advertised as a color corrector. It's really like a color corrector skincare hybrid. It retails for $34 and it comes in three shades. I got the lightest shade banana. You know, I've experienced better color correctors. I wouldn't recommend going out to buy this. I really think that it's more of a skincare benefit than a color corrector. It's just really light. The way that I would use this is just like a color corrector. So I would apply this under my eye before foundation, blend it out with my finger. And then that way, any kind of lighter coverage concealer that I wanted to just bump up the coverage a little bit more, I had that and I also had like some brightening effects. So for me, this is like an okay product. I could take it or leave it, but there's other color correctors that I like out there. And that now brings us to the ranking. So we're gonna start with the number 12, work our way up. The first one that I have, the very first one, this is like the dud of the group. This is the Shiseido Synchro Self-Refreshing Concealer. $31 and it comes in 16 shades. And just for reference, I have the shade 102 Fair. So, you know, this is a medium natural, but more of a natural matte. They claim that this is a medium natural finish. I found it more of a natural matte. And I put this at the bottom because this, I put it on and it instantly creased on me. The coverage is okay, but it just makes me look 10 years older. It doesn't matter if I use powder or not. It looks terrible. There's nothing really more to just explain more than that. This just super aged me. I don't necessarily suffer with creases. You'll notice throughout this ranking, it's not really something I touch on. I more really focus on the coverage. I just suffer more from dark under eyes. So for this to crease on me was abnormal and I can only imagine how bad it is for anyone else. It's just, I couldn't find a way to make this work. So that is in the bottom. This is the only one I really, I just couldn't find a way to make this work for me. So if you like this concealer, of course, let me know all your opinions down below in the comments, but this one just did not work out for me. When I was looking at information on the Sephora site about this concealer, they do only have six shades available. So part of me wonders if they're discontinuing it. And I kind of just think that Shiseido saw the craze of their Synchro Self-Refreshing Foundation and just slapped a name on a concealer in order to get people to buy it. And it just was a miss for me. Moving into the number 11 spot, this one I really, really don't like as well. Like this is the bad category. However, I can get this to work for me. And this is the Huda Beauty Glowish Bright Light Sheer Concealer. I got the shade 01 Fair. So this retails for $27, it comes in 15 shades, and this is advertised as a sheer radiant finish. I just found this to be very confusing. 
when Huda Beauty came out with this, she was showing this on socials, on Instagram, I was like, okay, I can see the appeal of a product like this, but it's even too sheer for like no makeup makeup days. It just, it's kind of pointless to me. I don't like it. The way that I got this to work, and I'm only recommending this if you have it and you also don't like it, is I use it as a brightening shade if I have a fuller coverage foundation that I don't wanna add coverage to. It's a good option that way, so I'm adding that brightness without adding on extra coverage. That's the only way I'm really getting this to work. I think maybe if I had not gotten such a brightening shade, a concealer shade, and got more of like my skin tone shade, maybe I could see myself using that to just spot conceal on those no makeup makeup days. But even then, like looking outside of that, it's very light reflecting. And it's light reflecting in a way that's, it's it's not just radiant, like it, it has something in it, like these pearl pigments that light bounces off of, and I find it to be unflattering. So that's why I put this at number 11. I don't recommend this at all. Go forward, the rest of these I would at least recommend, but these two I would just stay far, far away from. Coming into the 10th spot, I have the Lancome Tint Idol Ultra Wear All Over Concealer in the shade 090. This is supposed to be a full coverage matte concealer. It retails for $29 and comes in 24 shades. This is exactly like it's advertised. It is a full coverage matte finish. If that's what you like, you got it. For me, I actually don't mind this product. It's a little bit light for me. I didn't get the right shade, but it's not a bad product. The reason I just have it at number 10 is mostly because this is not an everyday concealer. This is something I'm really only gonna wear on like an event specific day. Something where I'm looking for that full coverage look. So that's where I just docked points for it because it is just something that I don't think I could get through all the way. Now I do recommend setting this more with like an hourglass powder, some sort of finishing powder to just take down the matte finish a little bit. And I didn't experience any issues with creasing. It is pretty crease proof, but if you suffer, if you really struggle with creases under the eye, I could see that being an issue if you have dry skin, mature skin, or just like skin that really likes to crease, this might not be the one for you. However, I mean, it does exactly what it says it's gonna do. It's not that expensive in like concealer world. It's just not something out of all of these, again, go forward like this is the one that I would reach for the least, which is why I put it in at number 10. Number nine was one of the very first foundations that I think I did a video on that have been kind of just sitting there waiting for me to review. And that is the Valentino 24 Hour Wear Hydrating Concealer. This retails for $35, it comes in 20 shades. I have the shade Light R2. This, I liked at first. On first impression, I liked it. Just as I started trying more of these concealers, it just kept getting bumped down, bumped down, bumped down. This is advertised as a medium radiant finish, and this is the only concealer where I don't agree with those claims. This is a light coverage concealer, and it's not buildable, not at all. This is good for those no makeup makeup days. The shade I have, I can't really spot conceal. It doesn't match my skin tone. It is more of a brightening shade, but this works well with like a skin tint if I want just like a little bit of coverage under the eyes, and I don't want it to be too stark of a difference going in with like a full coverage concealer. This does have its place just for some reason, I don't know, I wasn't as impressed with this as the other concealers. And I also, I really hate the applicator on this. And that was something that they really hyped up in their advertising. It is like this unique horseshoe shaped doe foot. I haven't seen anything like it before. And it says that it's supposed to pick up the perfect amount of product. But for me, this is one of the only ones where I had to continuously dip my 
doe foot back into the component to get more and more product, it does not pick up the perfect amount for me. And I don't think that I'm someone who goes overboard with concealer. Like I wanna hide my dark circles, but I don't want it to look cakey. So for that reason, I put it in at number nine. I just, something is just amiss with this. Part of just my overall ranking too is the price point. Like this is more of a luxury brand. So I want more out of a luxury brand. We're gonna talk about other luxury brands as well. This one, it just, it just missed the mark. It was too light coverage for me. Moving right along to the number eight spot. This is the Dominique Cosmetics Wide Awake Full Cover Concealer. I have the shade Vanilla Cream. It retails for $26 with 17 shades. And this advertises as a buildable medium with a natural radiant finish. I think I tried this on on camera and I wasn't in love with it the first time, but I did warm up to this concealer a little bit, unlike the Valentino where it kept going down, like this kind of moved on up. I do like it, it's nice, it's just, it's kind of a pain in the ass to use. The metal applicator is unique. I liked that, that was something that they advertised. However, it's not as practical as you would think in theory. There's not enough product that gets onto the metal tip applicator and it's just not rubbing against your skin enough to give you that cooling, depuffing look. So it's kind of useless in my opinion. Now, this was the only concealer that looks better with a brush. I typically prefer a sponge application. It's just easy for me. I can go in with most of my cream products with a sponge and I'm not switching out my brushes all the time. So I did dock some points for that just for the applicator and the fact that I have to remember to use a brush instead of a sponge with this. It didn't look good with a sponge. I think it just kind of soaked up the product and didn't really press it into the skin. Whereas the brush made it a lot more creaseless, a lot more seamless on the under eye. And I don't wanna have to rely on my memory of needing a brush for this. So that's kind of why it's like a little bit lower. I would still recommend this. I think it's a good concealer. It is a buildable medium with a light radiant finish. It's not too radiant. It doesn't have that light reflecting particles like the Huda Beauty does. I really, really do not like that finish, but you can set this with powder without powder. It goes with a lot of foundations because it's buildable medium. Overall, solid concealer. Just don't like that you have to use a brush and I don't like the applicator. Number seven is going to go to this one. This is the Bare Minerals Complexion Rescue Brightening Concealer. I have the shade Fair Vanilla. I don't think I did a video on this one. I think this is one of the ones that I tried on my off time, but I really wanted to try this because I do love the Complexion Rescue Foundation so, so much. I think I'm almost finished with my bottle. I'll be pulling it out soon because it is a little bit lighter. It's more of a winter shade for me. So this concealer retails for $28, comes in 15 shades, and it's advertised as a light to medium coverage with a natural finish. Now natural is a really just vague term to me. So I just wanna specify, I found this to be more of a natural matte finish and I do agree that it's light to medium, more on the light side. This is the lightest coverage that for me is personally acceptable. Like the Valentino is just a little bit too sheer. This is light where I like it. It's good for like no makeup days but this is kind of just going in the middle, number seven, like right there smack dab because it's okay. Like it doesn't blow your socks off, but it's not bad. Again, just talking about the applicator, you notice that all the ones with the bad applicator kind of are grouped together. I think this is the last one I have a gripe with. It just has like a squeezy tube. It's hard to get the right amount of product out of this. I wish even if they were gonna do a squeeze tube that it was more of like a pinpoint squeeze tube so at least you had less product come out. But the, the hole for this is just too big and I can't get enough control on how much product's coming out when I put it on the back of my hand. I usually either use my finger or a sponge because of the way that I have to put it on the back of my hand. I can't just go directly in on my face. So those are kind of the main factors of why I put it in at number seven. Not bad, not good. Like I'd recommend it. It's a decent price, a decent shade range. Just 
There's nothing like special about this to make me bump it up even higher. Number six, the very just in the middle concealer. I like this concealer. It is the Tom Ford Traceless Soft Matte Concealer. Retails for $60, comes in 20 shades with a medium matte finish. And I picked up the shade 1C0 Silk. This is my first time trying a Tom Ford complexion product and I found it really hard to shade match. They make it easy for you if you already have their foundations. You can kind of see what color of foundation you are and then match it to the concealer. But since I don't know what shade I am in the foundation, I found it very difficult to shade match. Luckily, this is okay of a shade match for me. It's a little bit light, but there's not that many shades to pick from. So I think this was the best for me. This, this is nice. It's a nice creamy formula. It is different from the other ones that we're talking about today because it is a stick formula. I think that it's a dependable, buildable. It's a nice concealer. I don't recommend setting this with powder. Personally, for me, I liked this best without powder. Because it is a stick concealer, it just, it's a little less emollient than some others. So I do think that it benefits more from just not setting it with powder. And I put it in the middle because of the price. Because of the price. It's $60 and I need it to do more for that to be ranked higher. When I look at the rest of these, when I look at the number one concealer that I ranked, I need it, I need this to do more and it just didn't. So that's why I put it just right in the middle. I think that's the perfect place for this. It's good, it's nice, just money is relative and for me, it's not worth $60. I'll use it, I'll enjoy it. Again, I think it's a really nice concealer. I just don't think it's worth the price point. You're really, you're paying for the, the name at this point, like the formula is nothing spectacular. And now the number five spot. I was actually surprised that I ranked this one so high, but I'm, I'm pretty confident with where I ranked everything. I've really been looking this over and writing down my notes and making sure I put everything right where I wanted it. So number five is gonna go to the It Cosmetics Bye Bye Dark Spots Corrector and Serum. This retails for $30, comes in 18 shades, and it has a buildable medium natural finish. Natural being natural radiant, I wouldn't say this is matte because it does have skincare ingredients. So the only thing with this is I really like it. Obviously I put it in at number five. I think powder with this is a little bit tricky. If you don't use a lightweight powder, don't bake with this basically because it'll just look a little too heavy cakey but I actually quite like this. I reached for it a lot. I don't like the little sponge tip at the end. I never use that. It's not a sponge. It's like a little brush, kabuki brush, but I would never use that. I have the shade, by the way, Light Neutral 22, but I just naturally reached for this a lot as an everyday concealer. Just how I, you know, I ranked the Lancome lower because it wasn't a concealer I could reach for every day. This is a concealer I would wear every day. And this is a concealer I could depend on whether I wanted light coverage, more coverage. You can really build it up and customize it to what you want. So because of that, it goes with any kind of foundation you want. As long as you're using a light powder, it's okay. I really, you know, I wish that It Cosmetics, I think that the downside to this that kind of just made me rank it lower than in the top three, for example, is that I feel like they tried to make this so gimmicky when they ne didn't need to. This is a good formula and they tried to like add all this extra razzle dazzle with their skincare, the little brush thing on top and they didn't need to. Like this is a good formula that would stand on its own if they didn't like focus on all these other things around it that just weren't important. But that is the It Cosmetics coming in at number five. The number four concealer goes to this one and this is the Maybelline Instant Age Rewind Eraser Multi-Use Concealer. I think everyone who's anyone who wears makeup has seen this concealer. So this retails for around $10. Drugstore can be a little bit up and down, but I found the average to be around $10 with 19 shades and it is a medium hydrating finish. Now I am specifically talking about the shade 160, 
which is the one that went viral that's kind of like this pink brightening concealer. I have gone through an entire one of these, not in this shade, a different shade. So I'm already very familiar with the formula and clearly I like it if I went through an entire one, but I specifically wanna talk about the pink shade because that's like a newer trend type thing that we're seeing. And I did like it. I've also tried pink powder. I don't like it as much as this concealer. This is a good, just foolproof concealer. It's a staple. I think everyone's probably had this at one point. It goes with every foundation, powder, no powder. Personally, with the pink, I do like to set it with powder just to kind of tone down the pinkness and keep the brightness that the pink gives. So personally, I like to set it, but I don't think that you have to. And then, you know, the last thing I have to just say about this that I probably don't have to say is that I wish that they would change the packaging. They wouldn't do this like sponge tip thing. Everyone's been saying that for years, that it's just kind of gross. By the time, I think with my old one, by the time I got to, you know, 25% of it left, I ended up taking the sponge tip off because it was just gross by then and kind of just squeezing it out on like a little glass plate or something to get the product out because it just gets it just gets a little bit dirty and unsanitary. So, I wish they would change the packaging, but overall like a really really good concealer. I'm glad that I picked this up. Don't regret it at all. It's a nice addition to my collection, something that I don't have. And if you're looking for that pink viralness under the eyes that everyone's really talking about, I would recommend the concealer over a pink powder. All right, we are now in the top three, and the number three spot goes to the one that I last did a video on, and that is the Gucci Concealer, the Gucci Concentrate de Beauté Multi-Use Crease Proof Hydrating Concealer. $47, comes in 40 shades, not bad for a luxury product, with buildable medium and a natural finish. I did not like how much I liked this. <laughs> it actually kind of upset me. This is my first time trying a Gucci complexion product, just like the Tom Ford. I don't know what it is that concealers have this grip on me at the moment, but I really, really liked it. It just covers really well without looking heavy and has a nice natural but hydrated finish. So it is slightly radiant without having that light reflecting just whatever that is that some concealers have, not just the Huda Beauty. I don't mean to like harp on that one. That's just the only one like in this group that has like that pearl light reflecting. This is hydrating and makes your eyes look healthy and glowy and youthful without being light reflecting and just like bouncing light off. So unlike the Tom Ford, this just has more performance. It's more long wearing. It's more versatile of a concealer. And I just, I can't stop using this one. I really, really like it. This does work with or without powder. I personally like to powder it because I do like a little bit more matte without losing that hydration. You won't lose the hydration with this if you powder it, but you don't have to powder. If you're someone who doesn't like to powder, it will self set. So I have nothing bad to say about this except for the applicator. Clear, I'm just clearly picky about applicators. The, the applicator is just kind of cheap. Like, there's no plushness to it. It's just, it's a very thin, stiff doe foot. It works, it does the job. So at least it's not an applicator that's irritating to use, but I just feel like Gucci could have maybe stepped it up a little bit with the, the doe foot. They could have sprung for the extra, you know, plushness. It's just a little cheap and that's really like the only con that I have. Let's talk about the number two spot, and I'm going to give that to the Natasha Denona High Glam Concealer. It retails for $30, comes in 50 shades, with 60 of them being color correctors, and it is advertised as a medium with a natural finish. I love this. The first time I put it on, I was really impressed by this. It might be more full coverage than some people want. I think I've seen some people not like this. Personally, I mean, I put it as number two. I really enjoy this a lot, but it is a little bit heavy. So if you don't like full coverage or if you're prone to creasing, I could see it maybe getting into creases a little bit more than some other concealers. It's not a lightweight concealer. It doesn't claim to be a lightweight concealer, 
but it is bordering just a little bit to full coverage. It is not quite at the Lancome Tinty Dole level, but it is it is up there in coverage. Out of all of these, I would say it's the second most full coverage, but I like that because I want to cover these dark circles and it still looks natural while covering, whereas the Lancome is like, she's wearing a concealer. This still looks like my skin and it looks blended with my skin. Now I have the shade N2 and I don't think I said what I had in the Gucci. In the Gucci, I have 17 warm. Sorry about that. But coming back to this, I have a little bit of a hard time shade matching with this concealer. It's a little bit like color overload. I'm not gonna fault the brand for that because at least they're attempting to be inclusive, but I do just wanna mention like it was, it was a little bit tricky and this matches my skin tone pretty much exactly. It's not a brightening shade for me. So this is the perfect concealer that I personally use for no makeup makeup days where I want to spot conceal just a little bit, add a little bit of something and move on with my day. Like the Huda Beauty is not the one that I would pick for that. I'd rather just wear no makeup than wear the Huda Beauty. This is the one I would pull if I want that look. And I just, I really like it. It looks good, again, with or without powder. I didn't really notice any kind of creasing. And that's, that's about it. I think this is a good solid concealer. One that just like some others, I could see myself going through the entire thing that I could reach for every day. Even though it's more on the full coverage side, I maybe wouldn't pair this with a skin tint. But if I had like a nine to five job where I had to go into an office, this would be a great just extra coverage concealer if dark circles is something that you really struggle with like me and you don't have too much of an issue with creasing. This is just like the ultimate dependable concealer. I, I love it a lot. We're finally at the number one spot and I don't know if this will surprise you or not, but I gave number one to the Flower Beauty Get Real Serum Concealer. This is $12 with 12 shades and it is advertised as a medium buildable hydrating formula. I don't know the grip that this has on me, but it has some kind of grip on it. I love everything about it. The only con, we'll just get that out of the way first, is that it has the least amount of shades out of all of the concealers I'm talking about today. That's my only con. Love the packaging, love the doe foot, love the finish, the buildability. I love that it's hydrating. It very much reminds me of the Givenchy concealer. If you've been subscribed to my channel, if you've seen my videos, I rave about that concealer. It is my number one favorite concealer. This is like the Givenchy concealer. If you're looking for a dupe for that, it just has like a smidge more coverage than the Givenchy. And oh, I kind of like that. I might need to put them up like neck to neck and just see which one I like more, like really put it to the test and do like a battle with them because it is close. I don't know if this will trump the Givenchy. It just might. I like it that much. It's super affordable. I love how easy it is to travel with. I like the squeeze tube. Like I don't mind this kind of packaging. Some people might think it's a little bit cheap looking. It's an inexpensive concealer, so I don't mind it. I just think that it looks really nice on the skin. For me and my lifestyle, I don't work a nine to five in an office. So that's why the Natasha Denona is at a two. I work from home. I'm home a lot. I don't see a lot of people. I wear lighter coverage foundation on the day to day. And that's why I put this at number one versus the Natasha because it has a little bit less coverage than the Natasha. The Natasha is very full coverage. I've already said that. And it just looks nice under the eyes. It looks youthful, hydrating, like your eyes, your under eyes just feel good wearing this. And I, out of all of these, what, this was the one that I just kept coming back to. I'd have all my concealers out together, the ones I wanted to test for this video. And I just, I would keep reaching for this. So I really like this. And that's why I'm putting it at number one. I think... I'm not sure like what's going on with Flower Beauty. I've heard some rumors that like their website's down. So hopefully you're able to find this because it is just a good solid concealer. 
that's going to complete this ranking though, ranking the 12 newest concealers that I've brought into my collection, plus the color corrector. You'll have to let me know down below if you've tried any of these, if any of them were interesting to you. I'm hoping this video was informative, including the swatches and just the comparison side by side with and without concealer. That's something new that I've been doing, or this is my first time doing it. So I'd love feedback on whether you liked that or not, because if you don't like it, I just won't do it. It's easy as that, less work for me. So let me know down below in the comments, all of your opinions. That's where I'm gonna leave you all. I hope you're having a great one and I will see you all in my next video. Bye everyone.